Thank you. I'm Robert Halfbaker, the mayor here at the city of Clemson. I want to thank some people that put this on that do not want to be recognized, and I'm getting ready to recognize them. So, uh, Sarah, I don't even see Sarah. Right here. Sarah's right to my right. Thank you, Sarah, very much. Lindsay Watley, who's serving as we speak, thank you so much. We have Roll and Tommy who are in the back over here on audio and video, so thank you. Why are you standing in the back? <laughs> um, most importantly, thank you all again for being here. This is a great turnout. I am not going to spend very long. I just appreciate anything we can do at the city. Please let us know again, Robert. Um, make yourself at home. There's plenty of food. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Matt with Development Strategies. You see him waving. They've been a great support for us over the last, especially during COVID and everything that's been going on. So we're glad he's here in person and we look forward and I'm going to turn it over to you. You're going to notice if there is anybody else on City Council, which there is one, and Fran, do you want to raise your hand? You will notice that we're very quiet today. And it's an intentional being quiet. We're being quiet intentionally. But any questions afterwards, we're here. But I'm going to turn it over to Matt and you're going to take it from there. Thank you again. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you all for turning out today. Um, I'm going to start the presentation in just a moment, and we have um, a whole bunch of activities for you all to do, which I know several of you have started, and that's wonderful. I'm going to walk you through this presentation. I hope you all can see the screen. We wanted to do this outdoors today so everyone would feel uh, safe, and, and, and um, we just uh, have gotten the best weather we could have possibly asked for. Um, so I hope you all uh, enjoy the food. We're going to do this presentation, and we're so uh, thankful to have you all. We've been uh, working in Clemson for about a year and a half now. Um, this is our first opportunity to meet with you all in person. Uh, as for, on behalf of my team, we're city planners. We love being with people uh, in person, face to face, and we're so thankful to be here with you all today. Um, we're going to talk to you about Uptown. We're going to talk to you a little bit about what it is, um, what some of the opportunities and challenges are today uh, that we see. Uh, but mostly we're here to listen then and to get your feedback, not just here, but uh, one of the things we're going to ask you all to do is uh, check out the website, uh, clemsonnext.com slash uptown. Uh, follow us on Facebook, follow us on, um, on uh, Instagram, uh, on YouTube. There are going to be a number of opportunities to participate that way and a lot of information that we're going to be pushing out. So please, you know, even if, if you've got your phones handy today, uh, go find the website, subscribe to the email list. We're going to need a lot of participation from you all throughout this process in order to get things right. So. This first, uh, this is our first meeting. There's going to be two more meetings later in the process and other ways to participate. This is really about us listening to you all. So I do want to go through about a 30 minute presentation uh, and, and share with you some initial thoughts. And then we really need to get your feedback at these, uh, at these different stations. So I'm going to stand over here behind the mic so you don't have to listen to me yell all, all, uh, all lunch hour. And uh, we really look forward to kicking this off with you all. Let's see, is this working? Is this thing on? Y'all hear me? Okay, great. Wonderful. So, all right, so this is, let me see if I can, let's see if I can take this out. All right, can y'all hear me? All right, great. So, Uptown Next, this is the kickoff event. This is the first day that we are here meeting with you all. We've been uh, in town uh, touring this area. We were also in town, I think, back in August. Um, I want to share with you uh, where Uptown is in a moment, um, and we'll be meeting with uh, property owners this afternoon. We'll have some virtual meetings with uh, uh, neighborhood residents, uh, business owners. Um, this is really our first meeting. This is kicking off the whole thing, meeting with you all today. There will be another uh, meeting at 5.30 for those who couldn't come at lunch. And this is roughly the area that we're talking about, if you all can see this. Um, the area that we're calling Uptown, and by the way, we're calling it Uptown, think of that as a placeholder for now. You all as a community can may decide to call this something else. This is what we're gonna call it for now. Um, and it's kind of this triangle between, you've got Tiger uh, on the north, you've got College Avenue on the east, uh, you've got Lake Hartwell on the west, 
downtown is immediately to the south of us. So we're talking about this area. We don't have exact boundaries yet because that's one of the things we're going to be figuring out in this process. And this is part of the opportunity. So we, and I'll tell you a little bit more about who we are in a second, but um, we had developed the strategies. We were involved all the past year working on the strategic plan, which was a citywide plan called Clemson Next. Um, and we got a lot of feedback from folks on a lot of things, but one of the things was everybody agreed that the area that we're referring to as Uptown, the opportunity with the lake so close to downtown, there are very few cities in the country that have kind of a main street and a lake so close to one another, and everybody agreed there's an opportunity for something special. And I can tell you we, we plan, we work in a lot of places, a lot of cities, are trying to figure out a couple things right now. How to reintegrate walkability into their downtowns, into the center of their communities. How to have a great uh, environment that uh, is active and activated by people where you see people around. Um, and we're working on reintegrating these kinds of things into cities. Uh, something cities are doing that they've never done before is also trying to integrate nature uh, into their communities and have the city meet nature and have uh, unique and distinctive experiences. And so when we look at this place, there is this potential for a really great relationship in this space. Um, and so that's something we want to talk about. You've got Main Street and the lake, and they are 800 feet apart. That's, that's an eighth of a mile. Um, that's really a short walking distance. And that's a great opportunity. What we have today is really a mix of uses that were developed a generation ago that I think everybody agreed that there's some opportunity here to look at this and reevaluate this and maybe think about uh, what this place could be moving forward as a, as a new center uh, for your community that everyone can use and enjoy. And so that's it. That's the special opportunity. We're not drawing anything uh, yet. We need to hear from you all before we can start uh, thinking about and conceptualizing, and visualizing what this place can be. Uh, here's the thing, and this is really important to share with you all. Um, right now, at this time, the city doesn't doesn't own all of this, right? Um, the land around um, Lake Hartwell is largely controlled by the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, Tiger Boulevard is largely controlled by the state uh, of South Carolina. Much of a uh, state DOT. Much of the land is under private ownership. There's also a post office, uh, so that's owned by the federal government. So in order to make something really special happen here, we're going to have to create a plan that works with and engages with a really diverse group of folks that have uh, control over these different pieces of ground. Now that is not by any means an impossibility. What it does mean is we need to come up with a practical plan that considers all of these different needs and and various legal requirements, economic requirements by property owners that come up with something that works. And that means, that doesn't mean that everybody gets every possible conceivable thing that they want here, but it does mean that if we get together and plan and think really hard about the needs of these different constituents, we can come up with something that's, um, I think, that works, that's, that serves the community much better than what this area does now. So that's the idea behind this plan. So I like to look at it this way. I don't know if you all can see this diagram, but uh, basically we're trying to get to some concept that is approvable and fundable. And what I mean is we can come up with a plan that's realistic and it's practical and the economics work and everything, but it's not something you all as a community like. So you're not going to support it. It's not approvable. On the other hand, we could come up with and we could draw something that everybody thinks is a beautiful picture, but it has no uh, economic reality. And so, and then we're just drawing a pretty picture. We don't want to do that. We want to come up with something in between, something that can happen, that people do support, that does serve this community, but is also practical. And so that's the goal of this effort. So uh, I'm going to walk, walk you through, uh, that's, the, that's the introduction over the next 20, 25 minutes. I want to share just really briefly who are we. I want to share a little bit of this process and how you all can participate over the next four months. Um, I want to do a little, uh, a little, give you a little big picture sense of why we're here. Why did we pick? Why are we talking about Uptown right now uh, in this time and place? Uh, share with you a couple opportunities and challenges that we see uh, from our kind of planner eyes 
uh, about this area. And also, we did get a lot of participation, a lot of ideas um, during the strategic plan last year. And share with you a few thoughts of inspiration, a few things that we kind of put together um, to get you all thinking, thinking big about what this place could be. And then we'll kind of, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, I know some of you have participated in these activities, and we'll want to encourage you to uh, continue to go to these different boards and, and do some of these activities, because they're really helpful for us in getting uh, feedback from you all. So really quickly, um, a little bit about us. Uh, what we do is the kind of stuff that we're doing here today. We work uh, all over the country. We advise on real estate and economic development projects, urban design, community development. It's a lot of words. I just say we help guide and shape investment in people, places, jobs, and buildings. And we, we've worked on a lot of projects that have gotten built. The, the projects you see are projects that had a lot of support from the community after we worked with them and did a lot of listening to understand what they had. We work in a lot of university towns, um, and we do a lot of engagement and meetings like this with you all. I have to say this is just fantastic turnout today. Uh, and we're just really inspired by how many of you came here to show up today. This is the team you'll be seeing. Uh, you won't just be seeing me. You'll be seeing a lot of faces on this team. Um, and we've got different experts in, in those different areas that talk about real estate experts, urban design experts, policy experts. Uh, and we're going to walk you through um, a little bit of this process, uh, starting out with what is a development framework. So Miriam, are you going to take it away? Or was I supposed to do this part? Okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, we've been we've been working all morning to get the uh, working with uh, uh, at Lindsay's direction to get the food set out and everything. And Mary and I didn't get a chance to talk. So a little bit about what is a development framework? What are we talking about? Well, we're not talking about actually developing the property. We're talking about creating the framework so that the different players and actors that we talked about can all act in unison to work towards something that everyone's agreed upon. And what's different from, we did a strategic plan last year, and that was really looking at the whole city and all the opportunities and all the, you know, asking folks, what are the challenges, what are the opportunities you see, how can we diff address different issues in different places, who are the actors that need to be involved, what are the priorities. Um, and this was really, this is really about focusing on a specific area, specific development, we're now talking about, we're talking about a different level of granularity, okay? So the conversation's gonna get a lot more specific about particular areas and sites and opportunities and those kinds of things. And, you know, and in this process, you know, I would say these are kind of these four boxes that we need to talk about. And a typical planning process, we're talking about community goals, what do you all wanna see? And we're talking about place and design, what does that need to look like? So those are two of the those are two things that we, we're going to talk about. We're also going to talk about you know what is the market support and what is economically viable because otherwise if we don't talk about those things too then we're, like I said we're just talking about a pretty picture we don't want to do that we want to try to reconcile and resolve all these things so that we get a great framework and we always say this process it really involves asking two questions um, during this process what do you all want this place to be. And what can it be? Okay, so we need to ask you about your experiences and your thoughts and your, your lived experience in this community and what you would like to see. And then we need to evaluate that. We need to look at the economics and the market opportunities. We need to look at the legal framework and say what is possible. And somewhere in there, there's going to be some alignment where those things line up. Okay, and that's going to be really the foundation of the plan. What you all want to see and what is possible. And this process is going to be kind of four steps to this. We're just in step one right now. We're just getting started. And that's the listening phase. We need to hear from you all. We're going to come back in about four weeks. We'll get, a, we'll get uh, the, the date finalized, probably that week before Thanksgiving. We're going to come back with some alternatives. Okay, here's some ideas. Here's what we think we've heard. What do you think of this? What do you think of that? What do you think of this? And then you all are going to tell us. We're going to give you things to react to. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. And then we're going to go back and work some more, and we're going to refine that, okay? We'll make some recommendations to City Council, uh, likely before the holidays, uh, mid-December, um, and continue to refine that plan, uh, looking to deliver a uh, plan probably at the end of January, uh, you know, and, and we'll probably be coming back another time, somewhere there, January, February, the, the winter. Um, there's going to be a lot of ways to contribute. You see that red dot? It says Community Workshops. 
So all these dots are going to be different ways that people can participate. This is just this is one of them, okay? Um, and it's going to be some of it's going to be in person, some of it's going to be remote. Uh, we'll be some of you have seen our videos that we did from uh, the, the Clemson Next effort. Again, please go to that website and subscribe to emails and, and to get on the email list. You'll get updates when we make a new video. We'll be looking for feedback on that. Uh, so lots and lots of different ways to uh, uh, provide feedback. So again, check out the website. Can't emphasize it enough because this is going to be the, we're going to be here three times, but we can communicate in a lot of ways uh, over the next four months uh, through that site and on social media. Um, and one of the things we did last time was we did, we did put a lot of surveys out in front of folks. Uh, we got um, 950 unique responses during the Clemson Next Strategic Plan, over 3,000 surveys completed. Uh, we're gonna, and, and we wanna commend you all for being so responsive to that. And we're gonna need to keep doing that. We're gonna keep asking you all to uh, uh, contribute in these ways as well. And so a little bit on that, while we're talking about the strategic plan, uh, how did we get here? Um, Clemson Next was the strategic effort, as I said, we looked at kind of the whole city, and, um, and that website's still up, okay? So I'm going to give a little review on that uh, right now as it pertains to Uptown, but please go to the website, you can learn more, there's a white paper uh, on there. We also uh, recently made a short four minute video that kind of summarizes that plan in four minutes, if you, you know, for those of you who are time constrained and, and who isn't uh, these days, right? What we talked about were some of these key things. We talked about growth. Why is it happening and how is it happening in this community? You all are experiencing growth on a scale for this community that you haven't in the past. Uh, and that's kind of what was driving this plan. How do we want to address that? And some of the things that came up were uh, issues relating to inclus inclusivity. You know, what are we growing into? Place and quality of life. Uh, how do we want it to grow? and resiliency. We use that word, what we're really talking about there is your economy. And what a lot of people say is they like to see more diversity of businesses. And so um, these kind of became the key themes that people brought up. When we talk about inclusivity, people were concerned about housing affordability, who's able to live in this community, place and quality of life, what does it look like, how do we address traffic, how do we get around in our community, resiliency, how do we get more diverse businesses and storefronts in our community. And then all of that we kind of assemble back when we think about land use and development. How, what's the character of development in this community? Um, and so those were a lot, of the, a lot of the things that we talked about. So just a quick review, growth, why are you growing? Um, the main reason is because you are in, between Charlotte and Atlanta, one of the most rapidly growing economies. This is the size of, like, fairly sizable countries in terms of if we took this and made this into a country and, and measured its economy. It's about the size of the Netherlands. It's, a, it's an incredibly rapidly growing economy. And we got music. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a very good singing voice, otherwise I'd, uh, I'd try to sing along. I bet there's some better singers in here, I can, I can tell. Um, you know, you've got a great flagship university, and that's the thing, you've got this growing economy, all these companies creating all these jobs, and so the demand for college-educated talent is skyrocketing and you've got one of just a handful of great uh, flagship universities in this area, so the demand for college graduates is skyrocketing in this place. Um, so, you know, one of the issues we talked about was traffic, and one of the challenges that a lot of communities face when they're trying to hold on to that character is to say, okay, let's not allow more development in this place. The problem is the growth is coming, and so if you do that, the growth is going to happen on the periphery of your community, but the jobs are all still at the center. So everybody's going to have to drive in and drive out every day. So that increases traffic. It makes it incredibly hard to get around in your community. Um, and so one of the things we want to do is find, uh, as you'll see, opportunities to find places for growth where people don't have to use cars as much. And there's, there's no getting around it. Traffic will increase over time, but if you get out ahead of it, you can start to bend that curve downward, and that gives the community more time and the city more time uh, to plan for traffic. We also, as I said, talked about inclusivity and affordability. A lot of people raised uh, this concern that things are getting really expensive. It's getting harder and harder for a lot of folks to live in Clemson. And so we looked at this, and we saw that you know the average uh, home price, 245000 
Um, and we looked at the average salaries of folks uh, in different professions. We looked at nursing, school teachers. They can't afford to live in New York City. That's a problem. That's a challenge that a lot of people raised. Uh, young people, 25 to 34, very hard to buy a house in Clemson. And in particular, people of color, African Americans, uh, on uh, this community is unaffordable. And so these were all challenges that people raised that, that you all told us about this. We pulled up data and it confirmed and validated this. One of the challenges is, is upscale yeah, luxury housing. And I said we work in a lot of university towns. This is not unique to you. This is a challenge that university towns are facing almost everywhere we work, where uh, upscale student housing, there's a real boom in that. And it's very lucrative. And so investors can spend more for land, buy land at a much higher price than anybody else. Anybody that wants to develop uh, affordable housing or housing that's targets uh, that's affordable to uh, what we call workforce housing. It's affordable to nurses and school teachers, for example. Um, they, can't, they can't afford to develop that at the price that some of these other folks can pay for, for land. So that's a real challenge. And so one of the things, and this seems, I know it seems counterintuitive, but to find one of the ways you address that is by finding places to allow that student housing. You don't allow it everywhere. You figure out what places work in your community because Otherwise, what you have is a speculation. So you can just imagine every property owner then is gonna hold out for that, that big sale price. And what that means is they're not gonna sell land to anybody else that's maybe trying to develop uh, uh, workforce housing or trying to develop uh, uh, an employment center or a place where um, maybe um, entrepreneurs uh, startups, uh, people with kind of some of those storefront businesses that you all would like to see, uh, kind of, you know, where the economics work for something like that. We also talked about resiliency, and um, and this is one of the challenges that came up. When we look at non-university jobs in Clemson, about half of them are in retail, food, and accommodation, generally somewhat lower wage jobs. Important part of the economy, but um, lower wage jobs, and so, you know, half the jobs that are non-university based, essentially, uh, are going to be employing people that can't afford to live in this community, right? So that's a challenge, which means they're going to have to live somewhere else and drive in, and that increases traffic and all of those things. Um, and very, so not a very diverse economy beyond that of the university. And of course, we heard from folks, hey, we'd like to see, you know, art galleries and boutique uh, 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 dining opportunities and, you know, just just a variety of, of different uses. Uh, and um, when we looked... Um, you know, we looked at the economics of this place. It's about 10,000 plus or minus non-student residents in this community. And the amount of those kinds of businesses that you all can support economically amounts to about the size of a smallish uh, strip center. Uh, okay? There aren't, there, isn't, there aren't enough rooftops to support those uses without some other kind of strategy. Well, that was interesting. Um, a way to address that is to start broadening a business strategy. And so one of the groups we've been meeting with and got to meet with as you know, kind of your, your business owners, um, if there's ways that you can invite people in to come, come on the Saturday afternoon and spend money on your main street, that's gonna broaden um, the economic opportunity. That's gonna enable more storefronts to open that you all would like to see. Um, if there's a way to get more employment in kind of downtown, uptown, uh, again, yeah, that's going to increase lunch spending. All of those things are part of the strategy. So Clemson's at a decision point. These are some of the kinds of things we put strategies in to address some of those issues. And one of the main things was to find areas that could accommodate growth in the city um, and link them with great multimodal infrastructure. All right, so they're close to employment where we could build uh, uh, like um, Uptown, where we could find uh, opportunities to build some of these uses link them with bike and pedestrian systems, with transit, things that are gonna keep cars off the road. Um, and you know, these are just a few images of some shopping centers that are, when we, you'll hear us talk a lot about underutilized property. Some of these are vacant, but often it's underutilized property. Uh, as we look along your corridors, there's land that could be used better, put to better use to achieve more community goals and serve you all better than what they're doing today. And, you know, this is a quick study. I know this one might be a little hard for you all to see. We'll make sure it gets on the internet, but it's just a, it's a way to think about development. And these are all different ways that you could build 
uh, 500 units at you know at two units an acre up to 60 units an acre. That's a that's a you know multi-family dwelling. And how much land they take up? 250 acres compared to eight acres. And the, you know it's kind of a regional plan. Uh, your your regional planning organization they're just looking at different different studies, right? And if if um, if this region builds at the density they have been building, there's not going to be any land between. Clemson and Greenville and Spartanburg and, and traffic's going to get really clogged. And conversely, if we look for some of these key sites to do some development, um, it's going to consume a lot less land and frankly cost a lot less in services to you all as a city. That's better for taxes. Um, and so that's part of what we're doing. Now, uh, that's part of what the, the, the uh, strategic plan calls for. Now, you don't want to do all that without making sure there's community benefits, that you all are getting benefits for changing the way you're doing things. Um, and so the idea is to find places for targeted investment and development in conjunction with efforts to protect and enhance downtown and the lakefront, protect and enhance your existing neighborhoods, create funds for affordable housing, create strategies for workforce housing, uh, and ideally partner with the university on some of these things. So there's again a six part strategy. You can go on the website and get a lot more detail on ClemsonNext.com. Um, what I want to do is kind of focus on the catalyst area strategy. Um, and so if you look at the whole plan, there's a number of sites um, you know, on the periphery of your community that we're looking at for development opportunities. These are really the five that we found as potential redevelopment opportunities along your corridors, right? And so two of them, downtown, east and west, they're on kind of Walter T. Cox. These are opportunities that we identify for student housing. Right across the street, anywhere where you can find an opportunity to do student housing development where they don't need a car, you're going to be, um, you're going to be improving your traffic situation. Uh, or it's not going to be added to it, the, the challenge. Uh, the Clemson Triangle. Uh, there's a strategy there for that to be really uh, mixed income and affordable housing uh, with some mix of student housing and public space. Clemson Crossing, that is all about workforce housing, targeting the school teachers, those nurses, um, um, people of sort of middle income. Again, and linking all this to get to employment by transit. So that's taking cars off the road or it's not adding cars at the same rate they're going to be anywhere else. And then that brings us last, but certainly not least, to Uptown. And the idea here is that this could be really a one-of-a-kind place uh, that incorporates walkability, nature, uh, public space, so that this is, really, this is really the area that has the opportunity to serve the whole community, become really an identifiable center to your community, uh, and hopefully address some problems and challenges in the process. And so what you have here, I don't expect everybody to read this, but because this is the you know, strategic plan and one page or less. And basically there's four goals and uh, 20 or so plus or minus strategies. And the idea is you can't, one of the mistakes communities make is trying to address every problem they've ever had with the next development proposal that comes through. Um, what this does is really say, hey, let's look at nine different areas and let's take all these strategies and let's try to address these problems and challenges and seize on opportunities by thinking holistically about these sites and leveraging them uh, for what they do best. So um, last, uh, before we want to kind of talk about uh, thinking big, so getting down in kind of that uptown area, as we said, there's some great opportunities. We've got Abernathy Park, which folks have told us they really love. There could be opportunities to expand on that, continue to invest in that. Uh, we've got some Army Corps properties um, that they have unique requirements for. We have some development that's already underway. I know uh, it's probably with laser points. They don't work with um, they don't work with the TV screen. But um, you also see a couple of gateway sites. You think about those corners where Tiger Boulevard meets College Avenue. And these are kind of the main entrance. This is the front door into the heart of your community. And the thought is, what do you want to say about your community when people enter it for the first time? Um, a lot of communities are using those as opportunities to say, hey, this is who we are. This is something we want you to know about us. Uh, in, in really short fashion. And so that's, a, that's an opportunity that is unrealized today. There's that, that potential for some kind of link to the waterfront, um, which we think would be a great opportunity and it's something that people brought up. And just overall, looking at this whole area holistically, um, what will not get community goals achieved is everybody developing every piece of property 
on their own and not trying to do it in a uniform way in conjunction with everybody else. What is going to lead to something much better for, that will lead to um, more community benefit for you all and frankly more value for property owners is to do something holistic and organized. That's how you, that's how you create something that looks good aesthetically, that functions well and addresses concerns that the community has and traffic in a much better, more coherent way. So that's what this is. This is a special opportunity. So lastly, um, thinking big, um, I just want to share a few, few, few thoughts of inspiration. These were things that we talked about a bit in the Clemson Next Plan. And then really want to encourage you all to uh, do these activities because they'll help us get your initial thoughts that we can then take um, and, and put into, um, uh, put into uh, uh, some of our thinking to start drawing things to, to, to put ideas in front of you all. So one, you know, some early opportunities, some of these images, and, and you'll see on some of the boards back there, we've got some of these images you can look at into. Um, ways to expand and continue to invest in the waterfront, create recreative opportunities uh, with, uh, with the waterfront, and also look for our opportunities for development, okay? That's, like I said, you know, we could draw pretty pictures all day, or we could come up with something that's, you know, economically viable, but that you all don't want. What we're trying to do is figure out a way that we can create usable public space, accommodate development in some areas that, in a way that has um, an impact that you all want to see and has doesn't have a lot of what you don't want to see, right? Um, and then really thinking about, you see some images there that have some, there's some ideas for gateways, you know, that you all can do. There's opportunities to really think about different ways to get pedestrians across that intersection with Tiger and, and College Avenue. I can tell you on my team's behalf, we walked it, crossed it several times yesterday, and it's, uh, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not a good time. We did, we did not enjoy ourselves. So, so we, we survived. We did. We did. We're still here to tell about it, right? So, so we, we certainly understand that was something we heard from you all, and it's like it's a perfect example of we, we talked about it remotely, but you got to experience it yourself to really have the full experience. Um, you know, bike and pedestrian facilities, again, all the efforts to, like, to get people moving around uh, without uh, using a car. It's going to be so important for traffic. And last but certainly not least, some of those ideas that came up in the last plan that could be really additive to this community and making it really special. And to have some of these ideas in kind of the center of your community and a place like Uptown could be really great. Something like a food hall, uh, something like a brewery, um, a business incubator, maybe some kind of public facility like a public library, maybe some art galleries. You know, these are the kind of ideas we need to hear from you all. I'm not saying every one of these is possible, but any one of these things would be really additive to the place. And if, we, if there's a way to find a path to getting more of these things, two of them, three of them, you start to have really the ingredients for a really special place, right? So one last thought I want to leave you, because those are some of the big picture ideas, and then here's on the flip side, here's the challenge. You know, we always think about like market demand and development framework, right? So there's a lot of market demand, and a lot of times the the demand for the thing you want the most is the one for which there's the least develop, uh, opportunity. Doesn't mean there's no opportunity though, it just means um, we've got to cobble together uh, the things that you all want uh, and, and need that are going to be uh, beneficial to the whole community and be really thoughtful about where we place those. And then we got to figure out pieces of ground to put those on, right? We've got some things where we've got, okay, we've got viable businesses and they're not going to go anywhere for a while. Right? And they're contributing uh, to the tax base of this community, right? Then we've got underutilized property, we've got some vacant property, we've got some other areas where we've got Abernathy Park, and that's public space. We wanna we don't want to take that away, we wanna we wanna build on that and grow that, right? And and continue to invest in it, right? So we've got all these things, um, and there's a lot of opportunity for some of them, small opportunity for others. Which of these do we want to put in, in the space that we have? So that's a way to think about that. So again. This is the process. We're in step one right now. Uh, I've done some talking, and I think we're gonna we're gonna quit talking real quickly because we need to hear from you all. Uh, and like I said, we'll take what we hear from you all. Uh, there's another meeting tonight at, at 5:30. We're gonna be talking to property owners. We're gonna have some virtual meetings with some uh, uh, business owners and, and neighborhood residents in the in the coming weeks. But we're gonna come back to you all with some ideas to put in front of you. 
um, because um, at some point we got to start putting some things on a page and we can talk about it all day, but we'd rather show you some ideas and let you all tell us yes, no, maybe so, and, and, and then we can keep building on it then. Um, and so that's what we wanted to share with you. We'll, we'll take that again, like I said, and we'll continue to refine those ideas. And so what we want for those, I know several of you have started doing the activities, that's wonderful. Um, we need to keep doing those, and we need for those of you that have time after this lunch uh, to come out to these boards, come talk to us. We've got several exercises. One is in a word. We need you kind of in one word to tell us uh, what do you want to describe this place in 10 years? Um, and um, and, and that, that's and we'll kind of we'll be able to share some of those. Uh, we'll kind of aggregate those, see if you all are saying the same thing. You're telling us different things, and we'll try to try to work those into a plan. Mobility and connectivity. We want to hear about how you are. That's another station. We want to hear how you're getting around uh, town today and how you'd like to get around in the future. Uh, we want to hear about your experiences in Uptown uh, right now, right? So there's an exercise there, an activity. Tell us what you like about the place today. Tell us what you think needs improvement. Well, we've got little dots, and you can kind of show us specific places, things that you like and don't like. Land use and destinations, all right? We need to understand how you're using this place today and what kinds of developments could be encouraged uh, in Uptown. So we shared a few thoughts on that. We want to hear from you all. Um, and lastly, character and identity. What do you want Uptown to look like and feel like? All right, so there's some, you'll see uh, way in the back there, you'll see some images. And, and uh, we tried to pick really a diversity of things, right? Um, and we, we need to hear from you all, um, you know, what type of architecture do you like? And what types of uses do you want to see? And so that's kind of in that, that back area over there. So those are some of the activities that we want. And I do want to, you know, but plug in the website, plug in it hard again, even just before you all leave, go, uh, if you can, just look up that website, subscribe to that email list, and again, we're, we'll be on Facebook and, and uh, Instagram. Um, we'll have a survey up probably Wednesday night, so if you subscribe, you'll get, uh, you know, you'll get an email reminder uh, when, the web, uh, when the survey's up, and uh, that'll be another opportunity for you all to participate, but also any folks that couldn't make the meeting uh, this one or the one this evening, that'll be another way to participate. So that's the presentation. Uh, we want to quit talking and we want to encourage you all to come to these stations. Uh, I'll be around at one of them. Uh, Miriam's here. If you can stand up, kind of put your hand up and uh, we'll be around. Um, and uh, just please come to these boards. Uh, we want to hear from you all. I want to thank you all so much for being here. Thank uh, Lindsay and Lindsay and Sarah for putting all this together. Uh, thanks city staff, thank council for having us all. So, big round of applause for them all. So, thank you all so much. Please come meet us at the stations. We can't wait to hear from you all. Thank you so much.